for this project, we're trying to find out the kinetic constants for the reaction of ethyl acetate with NaOH. So what you're going to do is put the NaOH in to the reactor, have it stirring, and then add the ethyl acetate into the NaOH, um, and be able to take the data and export it to the computer and back out your rate constants that way. Standardize first. And then what you're going to do is you're going to clear the last standardization. So you're going to want to standardize this every single time that you come in the lab. So this is from the previous time. So you want to be able to clear this out before you make your own standardization. So you want to clear the whole thing. So you hit OK. And that clears out. Um, then what you're going to do is you're going to use your 4 pH, 7 pH, and 10 pH buffers. And so you're going to insert the probe in each buffer and then wait till this screen shows up asking what pH it is. So in this case it's 4.01 and you're going to enter that in. And then it's going to flash at you and you want to hit confirm to be able to make sure that it takes. So it has that one standardized. Next we're going to go to the 7 pH and then the 10 pH. So you're going to go through the same procedure that you did before. Hit standardize, wait till it blinks at you, and then insert the pH. Sorry, I think this is 7. And then hit confirm again. Enter that in, wait till it blinks, hit confirm, and now it's completely standardized and ready to go. Okay, so that's the calibration then for the pH meter. Is that right? That's right. Okay, great. As soon as you're on a particular screen, let's go look at it, um, it is recording. So as, as soon as you're on this screen right here, you're recording. Where's the little pen? And you can, you can show your graph and you can see this will read and show you what your pH is at. Okay, so how do you get data off of it? Um, Okay, real quick, before you go into there, um, you have to make sure that when you clear the previous file from whatever day before you did, um, you're going to go to your setup, you're going to go to view, and then you're going to clear all this. And the point of that is so that you have new data from you know today's experiment. And when you delete it all and you get out of here, get out of here, as soon as you get back to the screen, it's, it's taking data. Okay, that's the important part. So don't get off off of this screen while you're trying to take data, and don't clear it because you'll you'll get rid of it. Okay. So keep it on this screen Great. while you're collecting data. You're gonna go to setup, and then you're gonna go to view, and that'll show you all the data points that have been taken. So in order to get this off, as you can see, it's pulling it up right now. Um, you're gonna go to export view and header. And this will pull up these different files. You're going to hit storage card. And then you're going to save it in your specified file that you make on this storage card back here. So you're going to hit OK, and that'll save it there. Um, and then you're going to want to delete the data file. So you, when you take another data point, it's completely clear. So you go delete all, OK, and then hit OK twice to return to that other screen. And now it's recording again. And another thing you want to make sure of is that it's set to take data um, at a certain timed interval. So right now it's set to manual, which means that you have to hit every time that you want it to take data. That means you have to tell it to take data. So you're going to want to go to timed, and the fastest that I can take is three seconds. So you can choose the amount of time that you want it to take, and it'll take data every three seconds. So you want to make sure that it's set to that before you start running. Okay, some problems with the experiment, things you should look out for. Do not touch the reactor while you're measuring pH. Uh, we haven't had the problem ourselves, but we've heard from other groups that if you touch this reactor, the metal or the glass or any of it, that your pH meter is gonna do some funky things. So it might give you false readings if you touch it. Also, don't touch your pH meter, that's just common sense. Don't touch the end of your pH meter. You also close the pH that way. But make sure you calibrate it each time. When you're reading the calibration, let it settle to an actual constant pH each, which you, with each buffer. Let it settle so that you know that it's on the right value so that you get the best calibration as possible. And you also want to dump out your buffer solutions each time because you never know how good the lab group was before you.